Legendary singer and songwriter Chubby Checker is known best for his rendition of the song The Twist and his follow-up hit Let's Twist Again. He's a staple of any great playlist of classic oldies, and he's highly regarded as a great performer and artist. But did you know that about a decade ago, he was dragged into a scandal involving an app that measured penis size? It's a bizarre twist, if you will, in an otherwise scandal-free existence. In this video, we're taking a look at what happened with this app and the ensuing lawsuit, as well as some interesting facts about the life and career of this great artist. Join Facts First as we present Chubby Checker Sued Over Penis Measuring App. The Chubby Checker before the era when iPhones and Android devices dominated the market, people used devices like Blackberries and Palm PDAs. Palm was owned by Hewlett Packard, and they developed an app store where users could add third-party apps to their devices, similar to the phones of today. Now, it would be safe to assume that beyond someone streaming a chubby checker song on their phone, the connection between the legendary singer and handheld devices would be pretty much nothing. But about a decade ago, Checker found himself the victim of some unfortunate marketing by an app creator. An app called The Chubby Checker was published on the HP Palm OS platform, but it had nothing to do with Chubby Checker, the artist, or with music of any kind. Instead, the app purported to be able to measure penis size. It was based on the old false rumor that a man's shoe size directly correlated with the size of his member, so users could theoretically enter the shoe size of a man they knew, and the app would spit out an approximation of his penis size. It's likely it was meant as a goof, similar to so many of the apps developed in the early days. Remember that one that looked like a beer and it would disappear when you tilted your phone and drank the beer? People actually paid 99 cents for that back in the day. We rest our case. The Lawsuit But Chubby and his lawyers didn't take too kindly to the app using his name as part of their branding. Understandably, Chubby wanted nothing to do with the app. So much so that he and his legal team brought a lawsuit against Hewlett Packard for, quote, irreparable damage and harm. The suit claimed the app would permanently tarnish his name and reputation, especially because it made users associate the name Chubby Checker with what they claimed was obscene sexual connotation and images. But they had a point. Who would want their name to be used as a reference to checking penis size? Well, apparently, Checker and his team were very against the idea because their suit was for half a billion dollars. They demanded the app be taken down with a cease and desist order, which it was, prior to the conclusion of the suit. But they also demanded that Checker be given all of the app's profits. And while many app makers these days have been able to make a fortune for their creations, the Chubby Checker app doesn't appear to have been one of them. It reportedly was only downloaded 84 times for 99 cents each. So it's unclear how his lawyers arrived at half a billion dollars. But nevertheless, the suit moved forward. The Settlement a year later, in 2013, the lawsuit was settled. Chubby's lawyers had filed a claim that the app violated the Communications Decency Act. That portion of the lawsuit ended up getting thrown out of court by a federal judge. But they also filed for trademark infringement, and that element of the suit was deemed legit by the judge. It was slated to head to court a couple months after the ruling, but before that could happen, the two sides agreed on a settlement. The amount wasn't made public, but I think we can assume it was nowhere close to 500 million bucks. But fortunately, it was an amount both parties could deal with. Though it should be noted, neither side was forced to accept liability. As part of the suit, HP had to agree not to use Chubby's name and likeness on any of their products. So you won't be seeing the newest HP Chubby Checker printer anytime soon. Now let's talk about some other aspects of Chubby's life and career, starting with some fun facts you might not know about the singer. How he got the name Chubby Checker was born Ernest Evans. He was born in South Carolina, and his parents were tobacco farmers. When Ernest was young, the family moved to Philly, where he began to work as a store clerk at a local grocery store. He was a precocious boy and was always looking to entertain people, even while at work. Reportedly, he would regale his fellow employees and customers with songs and jokes and was a very popular employee. It was while he was working at this job that he got the name Chubby. It came courtesy of his boss at the market, a man known as Tony A. It's unclear whether it was meant to be a derisive nickname or if it was endearing, but given the fact that Evans seemed to be beloved in the store, it was probably meant as endearing. Then at one point, the owner of the store, Henry Colt, helped Chubby out in a way that changed his life. 
Henry was friends with a man named Cal Mann, who worked as a professional songwriter for Cameo Parkway Records. Together, they managed to hook up a private recording session for Chubby with legendary host and personality Dick Clark. While in the recording studio, Dick Clark's wife struck up a conversation with Chubby. While they chatted, Chubby entertained her with an impression of singer Fats Domino. Right after that, she asked him his name, and he replied that people had begun to call him Chubby. And because they'd been talking about Domino, which was also a game, she randomly blurted out, like, checker, as a response. Perhaps it was because pieces on a checkers board were chubbier than dominoes. It's hard to say. But regardless, everyone in the room laughed, and Chubby went by Chubby Checker from then on. The King of the Twist Chubby's most famous song is The Twist. It was a number one hit for Checker in 1960 and remains a classic to this day. But most people don't realize that Checker didn't write it. It was penned by Hank Ballard, who included it as a B-side to a release he put out in 1958. But Checker recorded a cover of it two years later, and it became a huge hit. It was notable that the song hit number one on the charts two separate times. When it was released in 1960, it went to the top of the Billboard Hot 100 chart. And while most songs tend to peak and then never really regain the top spot, it rose up the charts again a full two years later. In 1962, it was number one again, only this time it was a record setter. It stayed on the Hot 100 chart for 39 weeks, which was the longest any song had ever done it. That record remained intact until 1988, when Red Red Wine by UB40 stayed on for, appropriately, 40 weeks. The song's popularity meant that Chubby Checker basically became synonymous with the dance, The Twist. It started to take off once he performed on the hugely popular TV show American Bandstand. It was notable because it was a dance that encouraged people to do the move separate from a dancing partner. AKA, it not only was something that a person could do even at home alone, but it also didn't encourage teens to be dancing too close. This likely resonated with the conservative values of the era. The twist is credited as being the first in a craze of dance moves that correlated to hit songs, including The Mashed Potato, The Fly, and The Pony. Checker didn't seem to shy away from being associated most with the twist, or at least he was okay with capitalizing on its popularity to make more popular music. He released Let's Twist Again, which was his second most popular song. Though it never hit number one on the charts, it still did quite well. Other songs that didn't fare quite as well are his later releases like Twist It Up and Twist in USA. Chubby in the Modern Era Fortunately, Chubby Checker has been able to stay relevant enough in recent years so that his only modern legacy isn't a penis measuring app. Amazingly, he had another number one hit on the dance charts in 2008 called Knock Down the Walls. It also peaked at number 30 on the adult contemporary chart. It's no small feat to have number one hits five decades apart, but Chubby did it. In 2013, he put out a song called Changes that did decently well. He performed it on NBC's Today as well. And in 2015, he helped produce a show called Rock and Roll to the Rescue. It was a fundraising event whose proceeds went towards adopting rescue animals. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know about Chubby Checker's lawsuit against Hewlett Packard in 2012? Let us know in the comments section below.